So here's a recent 20 minute pose. And when I saw the re reference for this drawing, I really loved the relationship between the rib cage and the left leg, specifically the way that that left hip is really sticking out in such a dramatic way. And I knew that that was something that I would, I would want to have a go at. So when starting drawings like this, it's important that we have the ability to be able to adapt our process to the needs of the drawing and the pose. We've talked in the past about finding the relationship between the rib cage and the pelvis as one of the first things that we're looking for. But not all poses will require that to be the first thing that we find. For me, it was far more important with, with this pose to find that relationship between that left leg and the rib cage first, knowing that if I could get those two things down together, that the rest would somewhat fall into place naturally. So I've kind of forgone the idea of finding all the ideas of the pelvis first and focused on finding those two main central ideas, which is what I wanted to express in this drawing, which, as I said, the relationship between that rib cage and that left leg. You'll notice also that I am working primarily straight into anatomical ideas. I'm foregoing the process of drawing everything in cylinders or simple forms. Um, this really comes down to two things. It's it is about uh, confidence with understanding the design language and the shape language of what it is that I'm drawing. But also, in my experience, if you have the, that confidence and the knowledge of what it is that you're drawing, um, if you can go straight into anatomy, you give yourself far better chance of having a more rhythmical drawing than um, and a drawing that will have less tendency to stiffen up than a drawing that is started with nothing but a series of boxes and cylinders um, and spheres. So I'm thinking about those things. I'm being mindful of the volumetric ideas in place, but I'm trying to work straight into anatomical ideas wherever possible. This also comes down to um, the length of the pose. Being only 20 minutes, I really want to kind of get to the the meat of the subject, so to speak, as as quickly as possible. Still trying to be mindful of shape language, um, trying to incorporate a lot of straights against curves, or even some straights against straights, um, trying to mix it up. What I see happen a lot is drawings can get have a tendency to get too curvy. Um, too many rounds against rounds or curves against curves, you'll notice that I'm, I'm really being, maybe this is a stylistic choice, but I'm really being quite aggressive with my shape language and not just using soft turns of form. I like the tension that a straight can bring rather than a very soft curved line. Um, I want to preserve the tension as much as possible while also trying to keep the drawing as rhythmical as I can. So this is what I would call the diagrammatical stage of the drawing, which means I'm building up the form essentially using line. I'm describing form and anatomy using line. Once I feel that the diagrammatical stage of the drawing is in place, then I can start thinking about tone. But I really like to try and keep those two ideas separate. Then I, at this point, if I feel like the diagrammatical stage is where it needs to be, at, now I'm starting to incorporate some core shadow, showing where the form turns and where the form will go from being in light into shadow. You could also consider this to be part of the diagrammatical stage of the drawing. And certainly you could leave a drawing at this stage and consider it done. Um, but I do like to get the diagrammatical stage finished before I get into the tonal stage. 
I know there are some artists that will start straight with tone and build up that way. Um, for me and my style of drawing, this is a, a feels like a logical kind of progression. But I do like to get all of the diagrammatical stage done before I move on to the next step. So just finding some final ideas there. And now I'm going to go in and I'm going to um, just put in some very light tone. Once again, it's a relatively quick drawing. Um, but notice the way that when I'm, when I'm putting in the tone there, really just using the material that's already on the drawing, I'm working with in the direction of the form. I'm not just, say, going completely horizontal. I'm trying to accentuate and, and show the foreshortening and the perspective, making sure that the direction of the tone moves in the direction that the form is moving in. I think it's also really worth noting that I'm keeping things simple. I see far too many people um, when they're doing uh, tone in drawings that they tend to overcomplicate the tonal side of the drawing. Especially when you're starting out, try and think in simple terms. We have the lit side of the form in one tone and the shadow side of the form in another. And you can always add small accents here and there, but it's very easy for a drawing to get overly busy with too many different tones in the shadow side or even in the lit side. You may very well want some half tone in the lit side to describe anatomy, but there is a tendency for just far too many ideas to be brought into a single drawing. So try and resist that temptation. Try and keep your tonal ideas simple. Then you can build up from there, but you will find that there's a tipping point um, where there's, you're bringing in too many ideas. Once again, a lot of this comes down to the length of the drawing and how much time it is that you have to express your ideas. But generally speaking, less is more. Don't just blindly copy every little subtle turn of form in the shadow side and, and showing, you know, 10 different types of tone, it'll just make the drawing far too busy. The simpler the read, generally the better and more successful the drawing. So something for us to all keep in mind and try and be mindful of. And that's pretty much it. Um, I hope this helps. Uh, this is a tricky subject and I will try and do um, more in-depth discussion about light and tone soon. But I did want to just show you how we can adapt our approach to the process that we've already discussed, depending on what the needs of the pose are.